Hi everyone. Today we have a very different project because this caters to developers. When we talk about security, we say everyone should understand security, but we don't have anything which can explain to developers that there is a security that exists and um, they should take help from. So this project is about developers and the security around it. The project name is DSOM. And we have the leader, Timo Pargul with us, who's gonna tell us about what DSOM is all about. Over to you, Timo. Thank you, Vandana. The project uh, is a DevSecOps maturity model. It is about uh, enhancing security of DevOps strategies, um, which means that we want to make use of the new opportunities that there are, is for example, something like testing, and we can integrate security into this. And in addition, these new technologies introduce new threats. So we have to be aware of these threats and do something about it. It started uh, as my master thesis uh, five years back, where I thought how I can combine my three different strengths in uh, development operations and security. There wasn't a term like DevSecOps. So um, DevOps was there already. So I started with uh, searching for, for, for keywords and I ended up that I would like to write something about um, security in DevOps strategies. Then I started with my, with my thesis and uh, very soon I realized that there is a lot of stuff to describe and that, that we somehow need to prioritize what we do first and what we can do later in, in the area of security. So that as a developer, I can, can uh, understand the different dimensions and then I can just go through the different maturity levels and enhance slowly the security of my projects. Great, thank you so much, Timo. Uh, we also want to know that where people can find this project and how they can uh, take help from it. Like if you can uh, show us where people can see the project and where they can actually fork the repo, understand what the product, uh, project does. Sure. Yes, we have this uh, the US page. Uh, on this page, you get an introduction for whom it is uh, in, in overview um, and the links to, to the model and the GitHub repository. How exactly team can use uh, the different models that are there, like the implementation levels which are there? So, um, when you're when you're a development team and you would like to enhance the security in your team, I recommend that you will get a brief understanding of the dimensions, um, which I will explain uh, in a few minutes. And then uh, you just go through the different levels here. So you start with level one, and when you have reached all activities here, that you have um, introduce the opportunity described in the activities, then you proceed with level two, only then. As a development team, that would be my recommendation. So here you, you see um, when you go over it, you hover it, uh, then you get an explanation of the risk and the opportunities on, uh, on what you can actually do to enhance your security. And that is what you, what you uh, implement. From a developer's perspective, uh, from a security perspective, I, I would uh, define targets where the teams should be and then uh, measure where the teams are right now. From a development or team perspective, uh, when there is no security architect pushing us and we just want to enhance the security, I would start just with level one, go through everything in level one, understand what is in level one. And when I can say everything of this uh, is done, all activities, then I go to the next level because uh, it, it's a high effort to understand all activities. 
and that's why I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, go through all uh, different maturity levels and understand them. I would just start with level one and do what is described in level one, and when all of that is done, I go to level two. As in security architect, I obviously, as you said, uh, would would measure how my uh, where my teams are right now and define targets for 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 a period like three months or two years. You know, uh, I also wanted to understand uh, from a CISO perspective, how this model can help an organization because CISO has to think from multiple perspectives and they have to wear multiple hats and DevSecOps is something which they have to concentrate a lot because there are multiple teams working on it. So how DSOM can contribute to that? In DSOM, uh, we have a mapping to the ISO 2701 controls. So when you take care uh, in the model, a box that you have implemented something, I can uh, quickly show you. So this is a sample of how it might be implemented. And when you are in the, mo in the application itself, you, you can uh, click here, for example, automated PR, PS for patches, when you click on it, uh, it will automatically turn green. That means it's implemented. And then you can use a model to, to show it to the auditors and show what is done. Auditors uh, mostly would like to see how it is implemented uh, in the organization. So depending on the view, if you have an organizational view or just a view of one team, uh, you can add, uh, for example, here in the defined build process, we see an example. Uh, it's possible to document the evidence here. So uh, what I do at my client side, I, I obviously can't uh, publish that, but this is just an example that I document screenshots, for example, of a Jenkins build in the application here so that you can take a look at it. Um, we are also working on an Excel export so that you can export it in a way that you have all the uh, ISOs uh, or ISO dimensions and uh, next to it all the activities in there. Uh, that is something we're working on right now. And in case you want to, um, want to give a, a lot of documentation to the auditors, we have the option here to go on full report uh, where you can say you would like only to have the uh, performed activities. And now all activities will get exported, including the evidence, and you can simply print it and hand out the PDF to an auditor. They will have thousands of pages to read. <laughs> How exactly people can contribute to this project? Like once they understand that, okay, this is a maturity model we have, and we have few more learnings based on our experience that we had. So how exactly they can contribute to the project? It starts with very, very uh, small contributions like typos. So I come from Germany. My English is not uh, very good. So there are sometimes pull requests uh, which just correct a small typo which I introduced. Um, or they or people find better words than what I'm using. Uh, we also have contributions mapping to other models. So for example, to the uh, ISO 2701 framework, uh, someone contributed or to SAM, but um, I assume that both have potential to be enhanced. So when uh, you find ways to, to where you, you see a different mapping or a, an additional one, uh, that is an option. Um, also, um, the application itself is written uh, within my master thesis, so I didn't have much time. So there's a lot of potential to enhance the usability of the application itself. And uh, obviously, you can always add uh, activity. So when you perform something which is not described within this model, then uh, you can add these activity and create a pull request with that. Thank you so much, Timo, for joining me today. It was great having a conversation with you around the song project. Thank you for the uh, invitation. Yeah, thank you.